Hey Defenders, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how we can leverage Wazoo's custom active response, but in a little bit of a different way. Because while Wazoo does have built-in active response scripts, there can be some limitations to that depending on what it is you are looking to do. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how we can actually integrate with Wazoo's active response API endpoint directly from Greylog and Copilot. Really good example for a use case for this is running active response scripts after threat intel enrichment has occurred. Now, if you guys have been following along with our series for a while, you know that we leverage Greylog for our threat intel enrichment. And since that has technically happened after Wazoo has evaluated the event, the Wazoo manager is unaware to the threat intel enrichment and thus we can't leverage Wazoo's built-in active response blocks directly, but what we can leverage is their active response API endpoint. And with a little bit of customization and integration with their active response API endpoint, we can do just that. So stick around and we'll jump into it. So while it is true that Wazoo does provide a bulk of active response scripts, as you can see here within their documentation, sometimes they can be rather limiting depending on what you're looking to do. Or I may want to add active response capabilities after the event has actually passed through the Wazoo manager, for example, with our threat intel enrichment. Um, we actually do that with Greylog. So what we can actually incorporate is leveraging Greylog's alert mechanism and Copilot. We can actually craft our own custom active response scripts to where we have full flexibility to automate an active response without any limitations. So a little bit of how this is going to work is that we are going to configure a Greylog alert rule and that alert rule, when it is triggered, it is going to invoke a uh, Copilot API endpoint and then Copilot is going to invoke the Wazoo active response API endpoint. And this will give us much more customization when it comes to our active response capabilities. So in this video, what we're gonna step through is we're going to first configure Copilot and Greylog. We are then going to set up the active response script uh, because there's still configuration that we do need to set in the manager and also on the endpoint. And in this example, what I'm going to do is that when there is a malicious domain that has been observed as being queried with by a, one of our endpoints, then I am going to uh, just a very basic domain sinkhole where we add it to the local host file and just resolve that to 0.0. And then of course, we're going to uh, run through a test to make sure it works. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So I'm first going to, let's first configure Copilot in Greylog. So you'll notice within Copilot here in our env.example, we do have a, a there is a, API, or sorry, there is a new environment variable that we've added, and this is our Greylog API header value, which we're going to also implement into Greylog. So you can configure this header value to whatever value you want. Uh, this is just the default that we're setting, and I'll just use this within this example. But this will add a little bit more security to the Copilot API endpoint that Greylog, that Greylog is going to be invoking. So let's first actually, I'm going to go ahead and stop Copilot, add in my environment variable. Oh, I'm also going to pull the latest version of Copilot. So I'll add in my, my environment variable here for our Greylog header API value. Go ahead and save that out. I'm actually going to go ahead and update because I don't think I've updated Copilot in a while on this box. So go ahead and pull down the latest version. All right, with the latest version pulled, I'll go ahead and start back up Copilot. Now, while that's starting up, let me go ahead and head into Greylog. And what we're going to first configure is a new notification. So, so here under notifications within Greylog, I'm going to go ahead and say select, uh, or sorry, create new notification. And the title I'm going to give it, uh, I'm just going to call it Greylog Copilot or Copilot Greylog Active Response. The notification type is going to be an HTTP notification. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And then for the URL, I'm going to go ahead and paste in my IP address or my host name of, I'm just going to do my IP address here, of the server that is running Copilot. So what's going to happen is that Greylog is going to invoke Copilot. And I'm also going to put port 5000 because that is the API port that uh, Copilot by default is listening on. 
And then we're gonna go ahead and put in this slash API slash gray log slash invoke. So this path here, of course, will need to be the same. Uh, the only thing that's likely going to change, well, that will change, is your IP address or your host name uh, that you're putting in here. You could enable this, which we're not using HTTPS, so it doesn't matter. But I am going to set an API key, and that's going to be gray log. This is going to be like the header that's passed. And then the secret I'm going to implement is whatever I just put in my env file for my gray log API header. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that value. It's that here. I'm also going to select the send API uh, key and secret as a header. And I can go ahead and execute a test here. And this is expected. It does expect a 200, but I got a 500. Uh, that's just because the the uh, copilot validation for the API request is just not valid for this test. So even I, I would expect you guys to also get this as well. So we can go ahead. You can accept this as a test, assuming that you at least got some type of response back. And I'm going to go ahead and say create notification. I'll just go ahead and say not now on that. All right, so now we have completed step one of our configure copilot and gray log. Now let's go ahead and set up the active response. So there is a portion here. So what we need to do is add our custom active response script to the agent. So for this example, I mentioned how we we're going to do a very basic just DNS sinkhole on our Linux endpoint here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is actually also within the Copilot repo here. I've put together a script, which I'll link directly to this in the uh, description below as well. But if you do follow the, the directory structure here and go into Linux, we have this domain sinkhole.py, a uh, very basic, just Python script that is going to, that is going to add a domain to our Etsy host file, which just points back to our loopback. So meaning that the host would no longer be able to resolve that domain to whatever IP address it's actually registered to. So I'm going to go ahead and copy, actually, I'm going to go ahead and copy this script here. And then on my endpoint, so with Wazoo, when it comes to custom scripts, we need to add it in a specific directory and that directory being var osec active response slash bin. And then we need to make a few permission changes in ownership. So with this copied and on my endpoint here, I'm going to go into var osec active response into bin. And I called the name of this script domain underscore sinkhole.py. So go ahead and paste the contents of that there and go ahead and save that out. And then let's go ahead and make our permission changes domain sinkhole. And then I'm going to change the ownership and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll put these commands also in the uh, medium post as well. All right. So now uh, if we just ls this out, so here we see wazoo's default ones, right? But then here we see our custom one that we just added and uh, with our uh, permissions correctly set. So now we have the script added. And again, this script will go on the agent that we want to run this active response script. But now we need to add, add our active response config block to our Wazoo manager because Wazoo will not execute an active response script if it is not part of the manager that that agent is connected to. So if you have these running in a cluster, for example, you would need to put this uh, config that we're about to add now in the osec.conf of the manager within the cluster that your agent is connected to. So I'll go ahead and scroll down uh, just to the active response block and I'm gonna go ahead and paste in what we need to run this. So. When it comes to configuring Wazoo's active response, there are two parameters here. We do a command and then we do this active response. So this command name is going to be the name of command that we want to run it as. And then we're pointing to the executable that we're invoking. So just our Python script there. And then within our active response block, we are now telling it to run the command. So that command being domain sinkhole and the command's name was domain sinkhole. And I'm going to go ahead and save that out. And I'm going to restart our Wazoo manager. All right, and now with that restarted, let's go ahead and now, there is actually another configuration that we need to go ahead and add to Copilot, or sorry, to Graylog. So actually I'll do step three here. I'll make this step four, which is going to be to configure the alert. So, so what is exactly happening here? Well, this test that I'm going to do is I'm collecting packet beat events from my endpoint here. So packet beat is uh, a good tool to for network telemetry on your Linux endpoint. 
So the Wazoo manager is collecting those events, or sorry, technically the Wazoo agent is sending those events to our Wazoo manager. So our Wazoo manager, right, then sends it to Greylog, and this is where our threat intel enrichment is occurring. So Greylog is making an API call out to our threat intel service to get a response back. And then based on that response, we're going to have Greylog invoke the uh, endpoint within Copilot to actually trigger the active response. So I'll say Greylog invokes the active response. And what we're gonna define within Greylog are a few, a few fields. So for these fields, they're going to be set as action. So this is going to be the action that's defined within our script and specifically the active response script. So if we look back at our source code of our domain sync, you'll see that, where are we at? You see that here, we are looking to see if the action is equal to sinkhole. So this means we can create custom scripts and create our own actions, which trigger maybe different functions within our script. So again, being super customizable and very modular. And so sinkhole is just the action that I've defined within this script here. We are also going to add a command, and I'll set these up within Greylog here in a sec. And this command is going to be the, actually the active response command to run. So if you remember, we put the command name as, what was it, domain underscore sinkhole within our osec.com, right, of domain sinkhole. So that's what we're going to define as our command. We also will provide an agent ID. So th this will be the Wazoo agent ID of the endpoint that we want to invoke the active response on. And then lastly, we're going to pass a value. Now this will be whatever value from our raw log that we want to send the, to the actual script. So in this case, since we're doing domain sinkholes, this needs to be a field name that contains the domain within our event, which we'll look at here in a sec. So let's go ahead and go back into Greylog. And actually, let's let's take a look at this. So if I go into my Wazoo events here, uh, rule group two of packet beat. So here within our packet beat, uh, here's a DNS query that we see. So here we'll have a field name called DNS query. Right, so this is a really good field name because this will always contain the value that we want to run the sinkhole against, right? So this would be the, the domain name that our endpoint attempted to resolve. So that's gonna be a good field to use when it comes to configuring our active response. So let's go ahead and do that. So if I jump into alerts here, we're going to go ahead and go into event definitions and I'm gonna go ahead and create a new event definition. And I'm gonna just call this uh, active response domain sinkhole. Uh, I'm gonna give it a description here. This will just be to, for my own reference later on. I'm gonna go ahead and select next and then filter and aggregation. So we're gonna go ahead and trigger when we want this to occur. So I want this to occur when my threat level score exists because that's what comes back with my when a threat intel is reached. So I'm gonna go ahead and define my query. I'm also, because I only want this to run on a specific agent ID, I'm also gonna add that agent ID, which I believe is just o dot o. Let me go ahead and verify that. Dot o. And then here I can now set my time frame, however long I want it to run in. Let me see within the last five hours to see if we have something and cool, we do. So I went ahead and tested just before starting this video, but that looks good. We'll go ahead and do it live here in a sec. But here we have our search query set and we now know that is matching on what we need to match on. Now we need to add our fields, our event fields that we just went through, right? Our action, our command, our agent ID, and our value. So I'll go ahead and create these. So first I'll create our action and we're going to uh, select this uh, template and then we're going to call this sinkhole because again, this needs to be an action that exists within our custom script. So I'll go ahead and set that. I'll go ahead and now set our agent ID because as part of Wazoo's uh, active response API, we need to get, we can give it an agent ID. So this tell us to, uh, this will instruct Wazoo to only run it on this specific agent ID, which in our case is uh, 000. I'm gonna go ahead and set our command. So our command, again, this is referencing to uh, Wazoo's active response command name. So that was called domain sinkhole. And then lastly, I'm gonna set a, so you'll notice that these are all statically set, right? We're hard setting all these, but 
Now we need to set the value which will be related to that DNS query field, right? So in We'll go ahead and add in this value here. And you can see that uh, when setting dynamic fields or fields that are going to have dynamic values, different values, we need to preface it with this dollar sign source here. And then I'll go ahead and uh, select uh, require all template values to be set there. All right. And that looks good. And now we're going to add our new notification that we created, right? Which was our uh, essentially just our HTTP notification out to gray log. So we'll go ahead and add that. I'll go ahead and select next and then I'll go ahead and select create event definition. All right. So now let's actually, uh, let's actually trigger this now. So if I, I'll do a rule group one on a uh, packet beat here. So we're seeing all our packet beat logs and then here I'll just do a ping out to evil .com, which will trigger our threat Intel. Well, which will first trigger a DNS request, which uh, hope, uh, sorry, gray log is then going to check that. And it is going to go ahead and do a thread and tell enrichment as well. All right. So we see our ping out to evil Where's our DNS query, right? So we see it go out to evil.sockfortress.co. We should also see that our threat Intel value exists. Sure enough, it does. After five minutes now, this should gray log will match on our event definition, which will then invoke copilot to then invoke wazoo to trigger the active response. All right. So sure enough, we see our, uh, our alert go through and now with some, any luck, if we open up our Etsy host file, uh, sure enough, we get our new, uh, host entry here, which is now resolving this domain to our loopback. So now if I just, of course, go ahead and ping this guy, it's just going to resolve back to our loopback address. So pretty simple example, but I wanted to provide a way to leverage uh, Wazoo's active response in a manner that was a little more modular and fit into our stack a little better. And now by leveraging Greylog, Copilot, and of course, Wazoo's active response, we can now create our own. The possibilities are now endless. You can create whatever kind of custom active responses you want, regardless if they're events coming from a Wazoo agent or if it's like CrowdStrike or coming maybe from a firewall. There's a lot, a lot of capabilities that you can do with this. And uh, so I think it's a, a, a pretty cool way for us to be able to leverage Wazoo's active response in a more flexible and uh, maybe more powerful approach depending on what you want to do with it. So that's going to wrap it up for today's video. I appreciate your time and I will see you in the next one.